Histoplasmosis is the topic for this video, and histoplasmosis is caused by histoplasma capsulatum. Now this is what? Is it a bacteria? Is it a virus? It is a fungus. And this fungus goes and infects the lungs and can also cause disseminated disease by entering into the bloodstream. Now, histoplasmosis occurs worldwide. Questions on licensing exams often list certain specific geographic regions. For example, in the United States, they will list certain uh, states where the patient lives or where the patient may have recently gone to, sort of as a clue that the patient has developed histoplasmosis. And I'll list a few of the places. Ohio, Mississippi, Pennsylvania, New York, Maine, which is a state in the northeast part of the United States. So just keep that in mind if you have a clinical vignette that mentions a patient who is either lives in one of these places or has gone there recently um, and then later developed symptoms. So histoplasmosis is the name of the medical condition and histoplasma capsulatum is the name of the bug or the fungus. So why does a patient get this medical condition? Well it's associated with bird and bat droppings or litter. And this is a very important part of uh, the etiology of this medical condition. And oftentimes the clinical vignette will talk about a farmer or somebody that has gone to some caves or gone into the woods because these are the areas where bird or bat droppings are present. Now the infection occurs when the person inhales the spores produced by the fungus histoplasma capsulatum and the infection involves the lungs and then it can spread hematogenously to other organs. So now let's talk a little bit about the symptomatology of histoplasmosis. A lot of the symptoms of histoplasmosis are very similar to the symptoms of pneumonia, such as fever, a cough, chest pain. In addition to these symptoms, patient will also develop a malaise, feeling of fatigue, muscle pain, myalgias. And there's also a specific physical exam finding that I wanted to mention called erythema nodosum. Erythema nodosum is um, a condition where the patient will have tender nodules on their shins. And I have a photo of it I'd like to show you. This is erythema nodosum. And um, this combined with the pneumonia-like symptoms combined with a recent visit to one of the geographic regions where histoplasmosis can be acquired should uh, give you a very good picture of this uh, medical condition. And uh, one final thing before I get into the diagnosis is that there is a disseminated type of histoplasmosis it's called progressive disseminated histoplasmosis and it occurs as an opportunistic infection in AIDS patients. So that is uh, very important actually in um, the symptomatology of a person that is immunocompromised. So now let's talk about the diagnosis of histoplasmosis. There are several things that you can do to diagnose it. You don't have to do all of them, 
but part of the diagnostic workup of course includes a chest x-ray which will show a mass lesion it will show uh, lymphadenopathy the next test that can be done which is a bit invasive is called a tissue biopsy and that will show the yeast cultures of course are very important cultures of the blood sputum and urine and one test that is uh, very important in the diagnostic work of a histoplasmosis is something called antigen testing and this is a test that detects the histoplasma capsulatum antigen and it can be detected in either the urine or the serum and the good thing about this test is that it's more sensitive than the blood culture so those are the tests involved in histoplasmosis and finally the treatment if you have a mild to moderate case of histoplasmosis it can be treated with a antifungal medication known as itraconazole all the uh, antifungal medications um, tend to have an azole ending and then a severe case of histoplasmosis is treated with a very powerful drug known as amphotericin B which unfortunately has a lot of side effects so it's really only reserved for severe cases so now let's uh, go into some of the clinical vignettes 54 year old farmer in rural Pennsylvania presents to the physician with chronic cough chest x-ray demonstrates a mass lesion with hyalur lymphadenopathy biopsy of the mass demonstrates multiple tiny yeast forms within macrophages which of the following is the most likely diagnosis it's a nice clinical vignette relatively short that give you a lot of clues that point toward histoplasmosis next one 48 year old woman comes to the office because of painful tender nodules on her shins she is a resident of New York City. After the recent terrorist attacks, she was concerned and left the city for a week. She took a vacation to her sister's place in Maine, a rural area with heavily wooded backyard. On return to New York, she developed a dry hacking cough and a painful red tender nodules on her shins bilaterally. The nodules, which developed one day after the onset of cough, rapidly increased in size and became more tender. She is alarmed that she had developed anthrax and came to the office. She has no past medical history, is not on any meds, reports no allergies, and has never been hospitalized before. She does not smoke, drinks alcohol on social occasions. On exam, except for the large red nodules that are seen on both shins, no other abnormalities are noted. CBC, BMP, and chest x-ray are within normal limits. The patient should be investigated for. Uh, this is, of course, the erythema nodosum that they're describing. And combined with her recent trip to a wooded area in Maine and the hacking cough, she should be investigated for histoplasmosis. And finally, 32-year-old, previously healthy, an athletic male resident of Portsmouth, Ohio, is diagnosed with having CAP, community acquired pneumonia, based on setting fever to 101, cough, physical findings, and clinical stability. He is treated with clarithromycin by prescription for a 10 day course. On the fifth day, he still has a fever of 100.8, unchanged cough, and continued malaise. After a chest x ray reveals miliary distribution of bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, a TB skin test is read as negative. Further history reveals that he had been spelunking two weeks before the onset of symptoms. Histoplasmosis is now a consideration which of the following would be the best test at this point to confirm the diagnosis. Well, for those of you who don't know, spelunking is the exploration of caves as a hobby now this patient probably has developed histoplasmosis so let's go through these tests and choose the best one histoplasmosis skin test not really part of the diagnostic workup the next one is a biopsy that's a bit invasive although it can be done 
it's probably not the best one immediately. Urine test for histoplasma antigen. That's a good one. We'll keep that one. Again, a biopsy. Uh, that's also invasive. And then a blood culture. So the best test would probably be the least invasive. So I'll cross out B and D. So now we're left with either the urine test for the antigen or the blood culture. And if you remember, I had previously mentioned that the antigen test is more sensitive than the blood culture. So between all of these, the best choice is choice C.